Hi, Nico and Andy. Thanks for coming on 21 Towers. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I really, really appreciate it. It's nice to be able to like make time um, all across the world to talk Bitcoin. Yeah, New York and uh, Melbourne. Bye. So what's your background, uh, Nico, Andy, and, you know, what's EcoDeath Capital? I can, I can start first with my background, and I think that leads perfectly to Andy's giving her background in EcoDeath. So my background is Nico Lechuga. My my name is Nico Lechuga. I started my career in private equity, predominantly looking at companies and emerging and frontier markets. I left PE to be an entrepreneur. I've owned, grown a company in a consumer packaged goods space for the past six plus years, done some really, really fun, awesome stuff with that. And then in the past two years, I've been talking to Andy Pitt and Jeff Booth as to the happenings on top of Bitcoin. And we feel like this, we saw this, this wave of technology that was going to be built on top of Bitcoin. We felt like the most interesting place to be in the world was investing in, in that technology. So I've had the privilege to come together with two phenomenal partners and form Ego Death Capital. We'll dive more into the fund, but I'll pass it over to Partner in Crime. Um, so my name's Andy Pitts. As Nico said, we co-founded the fund early last year. It's been an amazing journey since then. Um, and my background is in, I guess, I was at Goldman Sachs for nearly eight years. So I've invested in banking, leverage, finance, um, and then sitting on the trading floor in a principal investing role. So kind of always in that principal role. Um, and it's, it's great to sort of bring that knowledge and skill across um, into the venture fund in the Bitcoin space now. So I'm sure this is, you can almost predict the next question, why the name Ego Death Capital, I'm sure. That's the, always the next question that you all are asked. And he has a great reason for this, sort of like a background on the name, but the, just a little background on like how we came to, I think like the, we uh, were having a brainstorming session as a team. And we were trying to figure out like something that had not as obvious as like a pit booth Lechuga capital or using something very much like Bitcoin oriented. But we wanted to really talk about this this transition that we saw from like an old system to a new system. I'll let Andy take the, the part of this from here. Yeah. And so we saw a lot of parallels. Um, we were thinking we're kind of, it's where it's this transition phase from something old to something new, from something, I guess, this fixed way of seeing the world to Bitcoin, which really challenges you to see the world in a different way um, and to build a structure that's very, very different. And so we thought that was similar in, as this concept of kind of ego death and meditation and psychedelics of kind of letting go of how we are taught to view the world and seeing things as they really are. Um, so that concept of ego death, it also has this kind of concept of, of surrender, of transition, creating something new. Um, and so that's why we felt it sort of fit really really well with with bitcoin and and what we stand for it as a fund as well i just want to pop up the website it's 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 really cool uh wouldn't i i think it's one of the most different websites for our fund that's uh, it's really interesting so what, what's the investment thesis i know you've spoken a little bit about it but would love to hear more about it one of the things that we saw when we were coming into the space was that there was this this ability to for um some really profound software companies to be built at, on top of bitcoin those would be global reaching potentially billions of people across the world and um we felt historically investing in the bitcoin space that it wasn't possible to be as specific as we wanted this fund to we wanted to design the fund for that so we saw that there would be this wave of like companies coming and being built on top of bitcoin and probably that wave would would lend itself to a fund that could invest at a pre seed and seed level so we're really targeted on like a stage base and then really targeted on the type of company so we're only looking at the software that was being built on top of bitcoin we felt like that was really important to construct our team and to to put that out into the world so that we could have the fund that could support founders that were building in, in that particular area. Historically, it'd been pretty hard to invest in Bitcoin with a, a decent sized fund. You had to be probably stage agnostic, agnostic to mining hardware. Um, but for us, when we came in, really, really lucky from the standpoint of we could be very specific on the stage of the company and the type of company and construct the team really with intention to construct the team to support those founders. And I think yeah, go ahead, Andy. it's also worth potentially just touching on um, why Bitcoin only. Um, so we are a Bitcoin only fund and we really saw that there are a lot of challenges with, with the broader crypto landscape. We had seen this sort of quite a long time ago and really assessing what's the, what's Bitcoin really is the only truly decentralized um, and secure cryptocurrency. And 
So as there were going to be these challenges playing out in other cryptocurrencies, whether it's regulation because they're unregistered securities, whether it's um, more of a broader market recognition of the fact that they're scams of some of them, um, that there's a lot of behavior that's very, very unethical. There's also kind of maybe a lack of product market fit in some of these ecosystems that has been fueled by kind of token offerings. And so we really saw as technology, as the technology shifted on Bitcoin and now allowed a range of applications to be built, that there were just be these huge waves of building happening. And that thesis has really played out in the last 18 months, possibly even more than we could have expected. Um, if we look at some of the developments on top of Bitcoin, whether it's uh, the creation of ordinals, so you now have these kind of full NFTs sitting on Bitcoin. You have the Lightning Network, which is really growing to scale and allowing scalability. And then you have, you know, obviously, as we know, a lot of the, the challenges of crypto as well. Are these waves visible to your LPs? Because, I mean, we are all within the Bitcoin space and this wave is visible to us. But is this wave, wave externally visible? Because I still don't kind of, I'm always confused externally. It's still crypto and, you know, Bitcoin is kind of mixed up into the entire shitcoin space. I think that they become visible in like certain moments. So, so like when the, the, you're watching the collapse of um, Luna or you're watching Celsius or FTX collapse, your broader investors, LPs in the fund that are not Bitcoin only investors or are not there yet become there pretty, get to the thesis of the fund. I think that that's a really, really like hard point for them. I think if you go on top of that, taking it a step farther, I think in, in going back on what Andy was saying, of seeing these like bigger themes play out is like an SVB collapse. And watching that and you saying that the financial system that we have is unstable and um, and we need something better. And you're watching that play out in real time over a weekend and briefing all of these uh, pretty sophisticated LPs, uh, many of them professional investors themselves, as to like how that's playing out, how that's working and, and how you're managing that type of situation. The, the part I think that is less visible to individuals outside of uh, that aren't on a day-to-day -day basis looking at developments on top of Bitcoin is some of these protocols and developments that Andy was talking about, um, whether it's ordinals or taproot assets or, or some of the things that like companies are doing behind the scenes. We really get a front seat view to like development. Uh, and it's a really privilege of the seat to be able to do that. And it's our job I think as investors to be able to brief our LPs as to what's going on in the space, what we're seeing and where we think there are opportunities for us to invest and support the ecosystem. You already, Bitcoin is a is a niche within the crypto space. And within that, you've chosen, you kind of call it layer three applications. And you mentioned not hardware, not mining. Can you elaborate that a little bit more? Like why so niche? And is that a problem for the fund? And how is it going about? I actually think it would be really hard if it wasn't that specific. I think the, the, when we really dive into it, like we've looked at hundreds and hundreds of projects that fit within that specific sector that we're talking about. And so if we were a broader, like we were talking about this internally as a team the other day, of if you were a crypto fund, that, that ethically, if we just talk about it, removing the ethical challenges from that, it, it would really be very hard to make a wave where there's hundreds of billions of dollars that are, that are ready to be deployed within that that space. Um, if we go to just Bitcoin and the mining projects, like some, there's some huge mining projects, some huge hardware projects. One, it makes it tough, I think, to if you don't have a stage that you're looking at for the fund to be investing from a thesis standpoint. And then if you're really evaluating these deals and saying you're going to support these founders, if if you don't have the specific area that you're you're looking at doing, it really be hard. It it it's hard to become like the go-to fund for them, in my opinion. I'll speak for myself. I think that it makes our job as investors easier to have the specificity. So it's like it all done from the internet. It's becoming, you know, different niches. And then the crypto space is also becoming a bit like that. And now within Bitcoin as well. Andy, what were you saying? No, I was just going to underline that it means we just have this ability to really assess investment and then support them because we understand the ecosystem so well. We know everyone. Uh, we know who's building what. And so we're able to to sort of make good investment decisions and then support the teams, which ultimately um, is good for the ecosystem and good for our investors as well. And I would say had we wanted to raise, you know, a $500 million fund last year, the ecosystem would have been too small so it's very much early in its development where we're very much at the beginning of, of this building that's happening on bitcoin thanks to the sort of technological um shifts that happened um over the last few years and so um it's been sort of perfect size for us to, to invest into um with a thesis that it will grow over time and so elaborate that a little bit what do you mean by layer three applications over bitcoin um so a lot of the layer three how we saw it was like a coining term 
of being empowered almost by a scaling solution. So like something that was allowing, so if we think about like the trilemma of any cryptographic currency of scalability, decentralization, and um, security, and Bitcoin being the most decentralized, most secure, really only decentralized, only secure layer one does not have scalability at the base layer. And that's good because we're maintaining decentralization and we're maintaining security. In order for us to have scalability, you really need the Lightning Network or some other solution that that may emerge. But really Lightning coming to this, this degree of maturity allows for then companies to build on top of Bitcoin in a way that wasn't possible before. So if and we can think you about- elaborate, Can you just explain Lightning Network a little bit for yeah. the audience who's not really you know using it or doesn't know now what we're talking about over Bitcoin? Totally. I got to step back because you're like a Bitcoin podcast and like you're, the, the, I, I forget like how much is like um, a lot of I don't to remind myself that the audience is not used to these kind of, you know, yeah. calls, which, you know, we talk about it as if it's our day-to-day life. I, I mean, that's a great point and like something that I just have to be like really aware of. So Bitcoin being the base layer, the Lightning Network, we consider like layer two. It's a peer-to-peer mesh network um, that allows for payments to flow through the, that peer-to-peer mesh network, potentially in uh, a capacity that's greater than a, the, the existing uh, payment systems that we have today and faster and cheaper. You could do micropayments on it that are not possible in the existing systems that we have today. You could flow more payments through it. It's open source, community developed. There are a few different instances of it, uh, different developing teams utilize, um, but it really has provided this ability for other programs to utilize the technology that it's created and develop some very interesting applications on top of that, whether it's in the fintech space or it's in uh, the energy space, and we could dive into to any of that. So to be clear for the audience, Bitcoin, the blockchain is layer one, and Lightning Network in this terminology is layer two, and this fund is focused on layer three above that. That's how how much progress we've made, you know? So go ahead now, Nico. So what's in Yeah, so... So layer three of those applications that are really um, not possible without that scaling technology. So if we look at the the companies that we've invested in today, a lot of them are making use of this ability to have money flow in real time. And uh, and we can dive into those, but that that unlocks so many different things that were potential choke points or problems historically with how money flowed over existing rails. And, and Lightning really frees that up. If you think about making a micropayment and and all of the different inefficiencies that we have today, whether it's wire transfers, ACH payments, um, or the existing credit card system, certain ways that money flows have created inefficiencies. And Lightning really opens this up and the technology development that utilizes Lightning is, is quite so absolutely, let's dive into it. Let's talk about some of the applications, some of your existing portfolio companies. I would love to. Yeah. Um, so we have made six investments to date. That's all public knowledge. I just thought about that as we're, as we're going here. And one of the first ones that we made into is this is uh, Fetty. So Fetty is the really brainchild of, of um, chow mein mints. So uh, federated. And one of the, the things with the Chow Mein Mint was like being able to to come into a bank and have um, these tokens that you exchange for money, utilizing those tokens in a manner that provided privacy for the payments and how you were like transacting with your money. The problem with that in the past was there was a single point of failure in that particular bank. What Lightning did at Bitcoin for that technology that was just developed in the 80s was it allowed for you to create multiple multiple of these mints and federate them across different members and then have interoperability between them through the Lightning Network. Now, that's a lot of like high level thinking. What does this really mean? Um, if we think about the- I was going to just say that. Could you say that? <laughs> I was like, what's the about- intelligent question to ask on this? You know? <laughs> if we think about the the like uh, the way that it really clicked with me is you think about there's like 3 billion people in the world that are underbanked or unbanked. And they move. They move around the world as they're moving from like one authoritarian regime to out of that country. And right now, like them having money that's stable or that they can bring with them is tough. So the, 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 the current systems that we have within Bitcoin, like a lot of time periods, we think about this for the audience. So there's multiple different ways that you can hold Bitcoin. You could hold it on an exchange. So you're giving custody to those exchanges. As we've seen certain exchanges fail, you might not be able to re- like get that money back. So you're trusting somebody um, to hold that money for you. 
in the United States and in developed a lot of developed markets, they want you to self custody it. So that means putting the the money, the keys of that 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 Bitcoin on a, a hardware device. So they, it looks like a little USB drive. And there, that's a barrier to entry for like probably the vast majority of the world because those devices are are quite expensive for the amount of money that people are going to hold and the the know how of how to use them is is a barrier. Like you lose them when you start to talk about the seed phrases that are there and there's just too much friction. So what Fetty did is it created this like social community custody for people's like a protocol for that. They're not holding any money. They're not a custody solution. But um I a community custody where you could have these federations run by your first party contacts, so think friends, family that you trust everything. And um, someone in like in Afghanistan or a Libya could walk out of that country with nothing on their body, like, recover their money on the other side, like Fetty's. Is it like an elaborate multi-sig wallet? Yeah. yeah, it's, it's, oh, yeah. Let's say, okay, we could go deep dive and, you know, talk about it and how it works and stuff, but um, really interesting. You can spend hours on, yeah. on Fetty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, when we were first like unwinding it, because you do these like deep dives of any investment that you're making and it was like, um, actually we were talking about the technology and you, you like back it up to like the roots of, of the Chamein mints. And then you're looking at how that's being brought forward by like Eric Syrian. You kind of like mind is blown by like what they've created. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty powerful. It's a cool company. Yes, yeah, especially when you don't, when you do not have an, any analogies to compare it with, right? It takes time to kind of wrap your head around it. Like it yeah. takes time to wrap your head around Bitcoin, actually. One of the things that we think with like with some of these technologies that we invest in and that I think about the, the personally and we talk about as a team is like, could could our grandmothers use that without necessarily knowing that like Bitcoin was there, right? If, the, if these companies, these early companies in Bitcoin are going to be really successful, then you shouldn't want to have to sell anybody on Bitcoin first. Like the, some of the existing, like the, our, the Bitcoin, te- the technology that's built on top of Bitcoin and the rail should be so efficient that like you flicking on a light switch the electricity should just go on and you don't have to understand that. The light goes on. But with FETI, it's one of those where you can get really in the weeds with the technology and the, the target consumer for that, if it works um, for them, and the biggest probably point of success, will they, they that will be abstracted away from, from any type of interaction that they have. That is a little bit uh, about some of your other portfolio companies and what kind of applications um, are built, which you describe as layer three. Yeah, you want to take one, Andy? Yeah, sure. So I think another really interesting company, well, all of them we think are interesting, Breathe. So Breathe, so we talk about layer three, um, and we talked about layer two being the lightning network, which is the scaling layer, layer three being the application layer. We would describe Breeze as maybe like a layer 2.5. So what they do is effectively abstract away the complexity of um, integrating light, the lightning network. So payments via the lightning network into your app or into your website. Um, so with a single API, a very simple API SDK for developers. Um, so effectively they're enabling the applications which sit on top of Bitcoin that sit on top of the lightning network and allowing, at the moment it's very, very difficult and challenging to program into lightning. There are very few engineers around the world who have that capacity. Um, and so Breeze is this kind of layer 2.5 that, that opens up the door to, to a huge range of applications. And the team has this amazing experience in the space they've been leading really a lot of the thinking around um businesses on on lightning for many years um so that one's that one we love obviously as well. who would be the target customer for breeze and would it be regular businesses or right now it would be some other bitcoin application tech company trying to use lightning into their uh, you know program or application product yeah there's a huge range um i think one thing which we really uh, kind of just come to this realization of of the team is when you have a new technology um, that opens the door to use cases, it's very, very hard to conceive of the type of applications which will be built. So if I use an analogy of the internet, um, when we first had the internet created in the late 1990s, it was very, very difficult to predict that you would have Airbnb, that there would be Amazon, that there would be Uber. Like we didn't know we, we couldn't logically think, okay, these are the applications that make sense. So we, we think about Bitcoin and the Lightning Network in a similar way. So if you have a decentralized currency, which is not controlled by anyone, what does that mean? Um, and we're starting to see the types of use cases where that really, that where that is playing out. And the same with if you have instant and fast transactions, um, instead of having transactions by a, a third party, which costs 2% and uh, settled in weeks or days and are reversible and 
um, all of these issues, like what does that actually mean? So what are the types of challenges in um, companies is that is that is that um, causing at the moment? But there's a couple of interesting instances. One of them is actually being used, like a use case of the Lightning Network is actually one of our other companies, which is called Sonota, which is effectively realized that we think about the energy industry um, and in general, everything in the world is sort of become digital online, except money is still done the same way as it was a very, very long time ago. And so if you think about the energy industry specifically, energy is constantly flowing. You're constantly receiving and consuming energy and how your payments work is based on um, how energy was done 50 years ago when you had a meter, someone would come out and read the meter, then they would send you a bill. And then at some point after that, you would pay it. So the flow of energy and the flow of money, were, there's a huge disconnect. Now, okay, that's fine, whatever, except it's not fine um, if you're an energy pr- provider. There's many reasons reasons, but one of the big ones is credit quality um, of consumers. And so if you're, uh, there's huge issues, huge losses in the whole industry because of um, unpaid bills and credit and cash lag and working capital, it creates so much friction. And obviously energy is, is, is a big um, topic right now in terms of energy security. Um, and so if you can free up all of those issues, like what does that look like? What does that mean for the energy industry? And, and the Sonoda team came out of kind of they these long careers in energy and saw these problems and then started learning about Bitcoin and the Lightning Network and saw that as a potential solution and a building this this amazing kind of super interesting product um, for the energy industry basically to allow effectively a stream of payments that match um, the flow of energy. The transactive energy is what they call it. Do you see any real life applications from your portfolio companies or do you think that they're still in the kind of building phase? Um, you know of the of the protocol of the layer of the technology so node is a real world application i mean they have energy like physical energy producers and physical energy consumers using their platform via bitcoin today to pay for the energy so and so consumers are using bitcoin to pay or they are using fiat currencies and it's just the Bitcoin rail. Yeah, so you could abstract away the whole Bitcoin rail. You could have, you could do it so that you have a USD to USD with a seamless on and off ramp, um, such that the consumer may not even know what is being used. Um, some people will want to use Bitcoin, some people won't. Some people want to hold it and some people won't. And so a lot of the audience, uh, you know, for the podcast is YPO members who run businesses, traditional businesses, you know, maybe even tech businesses, but not using uh, Bitcoin. Do you think the Lightning Network has reached a stage where they need to seriously look at or can have opportunities to look at Lightning Network to integrate in their traditional businesses? One of the things that we see and like are constantly blown about away from and are blown away by is the fact of like where we sit with VC. So if you think about the network of like the LPs that that are um, invested in our fund, uh, you're talking about different people from like all walks of life, from, from a high, like very, very... Uh, accomplished CEOs of financial companies to consultants to partners of different banks. They're all looking at the applications and the software on top of Bitcoin. And if they're not looking today, they're probably looking in the next year. Uh, I think this, the sooner probably that, that if you have a, an enterprise level company that you look at uh, some of these like cutting edge technologies. And one of the things to like bring it back that we don't get distracted by the noise of the broader crypto landscape and see the signal that's created within Bitcoin. If I were um, owning an enterprise level company, a, a big company and was looking for a stable technology to utilize, like there's only one. And so that's what we're really looking about. We've been we've been very, very strict with how we've evaluated investments of we want to have low speculation, high utility in the investments that we're making in real world applications today. So when we think about it on like all of the portfolio companies should have real world applications today. FETI can provide a potential infrastructure for those people in the global south today that's better than they have. And they've done pop-up federations at events um, that have been pretty successful. They did one in Prague a couple of weeks ago. Breeze is currently providing liquidity on the Lightning Network. And in exchange, uh, there's there's fees for doing that, which is pretty incredible. As you, you've created this like Lightning service provider as an industry. Sonoda, like Andy said, has transacting energy customers right now that are receiving energy and paying for it utilizing the Lightning Network. It's it's. It's pretty amazing. It's it's a large a large degree of what we're looking at is is not having not not having companies that are so far away from implementing solutions that solve inefficiencies in today's world. So it's great to know that companies are looking at Lightning Network. Besides, maybe everybody looking at AI right now. 
Yeah. Oh, what do you look for in your founders? Is that anything specific? Yeah. Um, you, I say you had our website up. So we, we put together pretty early on core principles that we wanted for ourselves and for the fund. And um, we, we see that like, pretty early on that entrepreneurs that are going to be successful have to have a lot of like passion, grit, solutions, mindset, integrity. And so we're looking at these things in the same way that are evaluating when we were coming together as a team, things that we want for ourselves or standards that we're going to be held to. We were looking for those in founders as found, founding and, and building an early stage company is tough. And we really want to spend time with people that we enjoy spending time with and have these characteristics. And so there, there's, it's part of how we're looking at these entrepreneurs is through those characteristics. The other things that we end up looking at within the company evaluation and diligence process are incredibly important. The, the, the initial stuff is, is, is kind of like getting in the door. Are you facing challenges from LPs to invest in Bitcoin-focused startups versus broader crypto space? That's a great question. We tell people raising money in a company space that they should be asking the same questions that funds are asking of them. So we do the same type of thing with um, our investors in our fund. We have a meeting with every investor in the fund. We get to see if they're aligned with us and how we're investing, the time frame which we're investing. And um, we have really been fortunate to have very, very aligned investors in our fund. So there is zero pressure to invest in anything outside of Bitcoin. I think that the unwavering um, degree to which we have to invest exactly in what we've said we're going to invest in is really key in that you're coming to EOTF Capital for a very, very specific uh, type of exposure. And we're not going to change that. And would you say that your LPs are Bitcoiners or they are investing in broader crypto firms as well in the broader crypto space? Some of the LPs have exposure to broader crypto, but the vast majority are pretty pretty hardcore Bitcoiners. Uh, they may not be hardcore Bitcoiners publicly because of their, their day jobs, but they're pretty hardcore Bitcoiners. But they do exist because I just kind of sometimes feel really lonely. <laughs> it's, it's it's kind of mind blowing. It's like if you spend some time in New York and you go around in uh, with some of these meetings and you, you're blown away by by the people that you're interacting with that are very much involved in, in Bitcoin uh, behind the scenes. And what are the, some of the challenges that you face as a GPO of a VC firm in the crypto space? Is there anything that you would like to share? Um, I think funny ones are are. The fact that like Bitcoin gets lumped in with crypto and we like we like fight that battle with like service providers. So whether it means from like banking, accounting, uh, insurance, like just just like basic things that you're you're trying to um, convince people that you should not have to convince of the, the difference between the, the vast difference between those two areas. I think that that's that's a challenge for me. Are you able to convince? And does it help if they come if they realize that you are Bitcoin only and not crypto? For us, I think it's also a ch- like with friends and family. They're like, oh, "I'm sorry, you're not with going money crypto," and you're like, "No, everything is exactly as we expected it. It's all going Fed right." Up. In Bitcoin, it's like great. That's definitely an interesting dynamic we have. I would say there is more and more of a differentiation in people's minds happening as Bitcoin versus crypto. Um, in call it a, a regulatory framework of say a bank looking at a compliance perspective, um, given the clarity that's coming down from the SEC. Um, you know, obviously- Are there the clarity coming down from the SEC? <laughs> Sorry. I should rephrase that. The actions that yeah, have that's a great the are very clearly, like all the language, everything that has ever been said out of the SEC is always very, very clear that Bitcoin is on an unregistered security um, and that everything else is. And so that is extremely clear, to be quite honest. Um, unfortunately, they're doing it in a way which is very um, strange, i.e. they're not actually providing regulation, they're just pro- doing prosecutions, which uh, I'm not going to comment on. Um, but I would say there is this increasing differentiation between Bitcoin and investing in companies that are look like regular technology companies, Delaware C Corps, that are building technology for the Bitcoin ecosystem, as opposed to investing in directly in cryptocurrencies, which is just a, it's just a totally, totally different thing. And that's a great segue. Do you think that the U.S. banking crisis is over? I mean, it's not really U.S. only, but is that over? And what do you feel it's... Has its impact been on Bitcoin or at what will it be? I think Nico referred earlier to the weekend of the banking crisis, which was, as I'm sure um, a lot of people listening went through 
a very interesting weekend. Um, it very much solidified for us what we're doing and how important it is, how fragile the system is, how insecure the current financial system is. It's all kind of built on this house of cards, whether it's government debt or, or, or this whole entire concept of fractional reserve banking. And you as a consumer, like not knowing where to put your money and not having a safe place to sell your money and your money being eroded over time. And so th- I think there's a lot more to play out across the entire financial and economic system. Um, and that's that, 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 that experience of that collapse of SEB and the related kind of experience after that definitely solidified um, my personal view. And I think our view as a fund uh, and Nico, um, I think I can speak for himself, but about the importance of Bitcoin and what we're doing. Was there a significant like difference? Could you see an interest in the fund in Bitcoin post that crisis, you know, in the broader community in LPs? There's been a number of uh, macro events, but that definitely is one of them, which has has increased uh, overall interest in Bitcoin. And any challenges within the Bitcoin space that maybe keeps you awake or do you think is worth highlighting? You're not Bitcoin. You kind of have to say something just to kind of answer and not seem like a Bitcoin maximalist, right? (laughs) There are honestly so many challenges. I mean, one of the ones is... The scalability of Lightning is is a big challenge. You know, it doesn't necessarily scale to every, it doesn't at all scale to every single human in the world having non custodial Lightning. Um, and that is a the, possible solution in the future. Are they on their way? Is it a challenge? Or is there a risk in it? We see Fetty actually as being a really really powerful scaling solution for Lightning, uh, because now um, I don't need to. I can have like a lightning node where I can have the access to really, really cheap and fast payments and all of the applications sitting on Bitcoin. I don't need to trust my money to a third party node like Wallet or Satoshi in order to do that. Um, I can do that for small amounts and that's great um, for spending money. Um, now I have access to, I can create a federation for myself and my friends and family where we can share um, and support each other in custodying funds and have access to the lightning network. So that the, the SETI kind of creates this incredible scaling layer on top of the Lightning Network. Um, I think one of the other challenges we're speaking about a lot uh, as a fund and and really thinking about how how we want the ecosystem to develop is the, the risk to decentralization of Bitcoin um, that are still real. There has been a certain, a strong a hardening, shall I call it, over the last 10 years, whether it's through the block size war, um, which have really proven that Bitcoin is decentralized and secure. Um, but there are threats to that. And so whether it, you know, potentially un, un identified uh, unexpected consequences of, of Bitcoin improvement proposals, proposed code changes to Bitcoin, um, anything like that, we want to be very, very careful about and really, really ensuring that um, the decentralization and security of Bitcoin is really prioritized um, above anything else. Because if we lose that, um, then is there, we lose everything. Is there anything specific on your mind in terms of this risk? Like in terms of mining or I don't know, anything specific? There's nothing specific. Um, I think it's a very, it's a more general thing. There's a lot of conversations about BIPs, about um, ossification. Um, it's definitely a topic within the community right now that that we think is really important to be a part of. Any comments on next year's Bitcoin halving and its potential impact on its price? We we love the, the price question because like one of the things that we like, that we, go around as we just I never give an answer on the price question of the the where we sit and where we think like Bitcoin is is that as long as Bitcoin exists it has value and as long as it has value the solutions hopefully that we're uh, investing in will have value in people's lives and um, I think if you look at past having as you can see the, the price appreciation of Bitcoin but the the past results do not equal future results um, and who knows? I, I think, but the, the the great thing about this is we have this amazing global solution, global technology, global money, um, and there's an incredible amount of impact that that can have on people's lives as long as the network continues to exist. And what do you think about investing in Bitcoin directly versus investing in Bitcoin-focused funds or Bitcoin companies? Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things that we think about these like companies being built on top of Bitcoin is we think that if you think about when the internet, the, 
the turning point of the internet, there were some companies that had just incredible impact on like people's lives and, and really some huge enterprises that were created in that time period. And we think we're at that moment right now with, within Bitcoin, um, to be seen, but those companies could be created, could, could have already been created today, cultivated, nurtured and grow. Um, and that's really interesting, interesting to us. Um, I think like a lot of people that are listening to this and are Bitcoiners um, will have some degree of, of Bitcoin exposure, depending on uh, where they think that that ratio sits. Um, we think this ecosystem being constructed today as we speak on top of Bitcoin is fascinating because it really just like grows Bitcoin's power and the network of Bitcoin. And like you said a little bit earlier, um, there are those chances that those incredibly earth shattering companies are created. Any exciting new projects uh, or chartering projects that you're looking at, which you can share? One of the protocols that I'm like really excited about that when we came together and we like started the fund. So at the time period, it was called Taro and it's been rebranded um, to Taproot Assets. So it's this ability for tokenized economies or potential stable coins to sit on top of the Lightning Network. And the use cases, I think, for that are so abstract at this point. Like the first things that you think of are like different NFTs or, or and the ability to have a token on like Lightning or um, stable coins. But that's just the, the, the things that our mind, is, I think, are primed for. And, and what this, this protocol technology can do or, or hopefully do will be like fascinating to see hopefully in the next like six to nine months as we start to see some projects like come out from there. That's particular interest to me. Nico and Andy, it's always refreshing to meet, you know, Bitcoiners and especially Bitcoin focused funds because there are very, very few out there. How can people find Ego Death Capital, find you guys? Yeah, if you if you want to find us um, for any number of reasons, we're always looking for interesting people um, that believe in what we're working on. Uh, you can just go on our website and drop us a line from there. There's a contact page. Uh, that would be great. You can follow us on Twitter. The fund doesn't really post much. The GPs, I think, post more, and you'll get more information from uh, the GPs and, and our advisors. But yeah, drop a line on the website. We would love to connect with any, any interesting people, any companies. Uh, let us know. Nico, Andy, been a pleasure. Thanks for coming on 21 Towers. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for having us. Thanks so much.